Good morning. This is Pastor Viera, Salvation Army Ashboro. I'm going to do the second lecture today, God Friday. <clears throat> Jesus died at the cross. Every year we preach the seventh expression of Jesus at the cross. This year will not be different. I'm going to make reference to the, this seven expression. But I would like to put in context the whole sacrifice of Christ, including and the main uh, of this speaking today, going to be this speech, going to be um, the letters, the second part of the letter that Caiaphas sent to the Sanhedrin to condemn Jesus Christ. I'm going to do this as a lecture. I hope that you meditate in God through Christ's passion for our sins. This is the plan God designed for human race since the creation of the world. Let's see first what happened with Adam and Eve in the fall. Genesis chapter 3, verses 6 and 7 said, The woman was convinced by the serpent, and she saw that the tree was beautiful. And it fruit looked delicious, and she won the wisdom it will give to her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some of to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were open and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness so they saw fake leaf together to cover themselves see god plan intent for human being was to be happy to enjoy creation he placed them in the garden so they enjoy full divine communion, eternal happiness. The story of the deceive, of the sin, disobedience from Adam and Eve, that disobedience fall upon the rest of humanity. And this is when Paul, chapter 3, said that we all have born in sin. Because we all, after the federative sin of Adam and Eve, they represent us in the garden. The sin was imputed and we born with our sinful nature. So God, in his omniscience, in his eternal plan, in his redemptive providence for human, he won for you and me, people in the Old Testament, people centuries before, that in our exercise of our will, accept voluntarily the plan of salvation, not because we have a chip in our brain and we have to believe, or we're going to be selected to believe. No. God made the plan for those that he knows and he knew that going to exercise his will 
voluntarily accepting God's redemptive plan through faith, by faith, in obedience, because to serve God for who He is, is the aim. It was the purpose that we live in communion with God, voluntarily, freely, because we love God. So that is the redemptive plan. Then, chapter 3, 14, 15 said, The Lord said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all animals, domestic and wild. You will crawl on your belly, groveling in the dust as long as you live. And I will cause hostility between you and the women, and between you offspring and her offspring. See the foretelling of the offspring of Abraham. I will be blessed all the nation in you. The ox offspring of Jesus, all of the spiritual children of the kingdom, enemy and a, a hostility between the good and the bad. He will strike you in the head and you will strike it, his heel. That's the cosmic battle between evil and good. God know the plan. He designed the plan. So you see, God re demand the price for our sin. Because when we offend, when we fail the law, we have to pay the price. So born in sin, we owe, we have to pay for our sinful actions. What God did in the Old Testament, He provides a way, a substitute. Instead, God, to demand the price from man, he instituted ceremonies and sacrifices so God can be pleased through the sacrifices that the people present on behalf of their wrongdoings. That was just a shadow because God have a perfect plan. God have a specific plan for human race. Leviticus 21, 16 to 23, say a couple of verses, and I encourage you to see those verses. The Lord said to Moses, say to Aaron, for the generation to come, none of you descendant who have a defect may come near to offer the food of his God. No man who have any defect may come near. No man who is blind or lame, disfigured or deformed. No man with a crippled foot or hand or who is darfet, or who have any eye defect, or who have festering or running sore or damage. No descendant of Aaron, the priest who have any defect is to come near to present, to offering made to the Lord by fire. The passage explains more in detail, Leviticus 21. 
See, what God intended in the sacrificial system in the Old Testament was to provide a system in which men can pay some price covering their wrongdoing through the ceremonial sacrifices, bringing different sacrifices, bringing um, some kind of offering to, to mediate between that demand of God from men and their wrongdoing. They need a mediation. They need something to pay the price for sin. This passage is structuring, is formulating, is painting pictorically a great picture of a perfect sacrifice that God expects. When God won the price to be paid for some human, the person need to be holy. The person need to be perfect. So you see, this is a perfect example in chapter 21 of Leviticus of what kind of sacrifice can satisfy the wrath of God who can pay the price for the sin of the world? Isaiah chapter 6 come to my mind. God said to the prophet, Who I will send to this impossible mission? The prophet portraying again the figure of the perfect sacrifice. He said, I am, send me, send me. And you know that this perfect passage is parallel with the calling of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who say in the divine counsel, Father, send me. I gonna pay the price as a perfect sacrifice. So Christ is the perfect sacrifice for the redemption of man. We can make an effort and pay prices, yes, but only Christ is the perfect sacrifice. That's why we cannot, by any circumstances, Take leaders in history. Uh, they are good people. The saint in the Old Testament. Even people that probably we are not related in the other civilization. Prophets, great leaders in, in, the, in the Semitics, Kingdom, Babylonian, Persian, Egyptian, Greeks. Uh, um, uh, from, from the Pacific Island, there are great leaders uh, that born and raised in history. Uh, come to my mind, Montezuma, uh, other leaders in the Americas, but they were not perfect leaders. They were not the one that can satisfy the price of the wrath of God for the redemption of our sinful nature. Only Christ is, was, and will be the perfect sacrifice for our sin. No, Mahoma, I'm sorry for my friend that Mahoma was a good man. Yes, like many others. You know, you probably are a good person I consider myself a good person. Why not? I try to do my best always, but I am not the perfect sacrifice. 
Nobody can replace Christ as a sacrifice for the word, for the sin of the word. So that's why he said, I am the way to the Father. He died for us. He suffered for us. He is the mediator between God and human to satisfy the wrath of God. Because he was a perfect sacrifice. And only a perfect sacrifice can satisfy a perfect God. All the sacrifice in the Old Testament spoke to the person of Jesus, the Messiah. In Christ, all the prophecies emerge because the law of Moses, the promises of the Old Testament, the prophecies of the uh, every prophet in the Old Testament, the typology, everything a mark pointed out to the person and ministry of Jesus Christ, passion and resurrection of Jesus. Today, Holy Friday, Jesus at the cross. We celebrate one of the most important day in human history. In this day, heaven and earth get together to this cosmic, cosmic conflict. Good and evil has to face. Yeah, the the seed of the serpent and the seed of the women. The duality of life, bad and evil. That eternal conflict. Well, not eternal. Eternal is God. But since Lucifer decided to disobey, that duality is still present today. This duality still holding us to save, to say to Christ, yes, here I am, use me. I want to serve you. I hope my friend <clears throat> that we can see today this seven expression of Jesus at the cross, at the cross, as an echo, one more time, that he's still calling us to serve him. Father, forgive them, <laughs> for they do not know what they are doing, really. Do we do not know what we are doing when we are doing wrong? Sometimes we don't measure the consequences. Sometimes we are so distant to our reality that just we work in our spiritual blindness. We operate without seeing their consequences. But God at the cross, He said, in the front of that multitude, especially those Roman soldiers mocking at Him, that multitude of religious leaders waiting for his death, expecting, yeah, we did it. I'm gonna read something about Caiphas in the second part of this video. But forgiveness is available because this is what the Father want for you and me. Luke 23, 20, 34 said, Father, forgive them. 
because they do not know what they are doing. Oh yes, indeed. We must believe and obey in God as Christian. My friends in Ashboro, that's our duty to obey God, to follow God our Father, which is in heaven. Luke continue in verse 43. And Jesus pronounced the second expression. I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. <laughs> the two thieves. There is no contradiction. One of the gospels say one thief, another gospel say two thief. That's simple. You know. Uh, one of the gospel pay attention to what one was saying, but uh, the other gospel put in perspective the whole narrative. Point is, one of the thief reset his life, and even until the point that death, he don't have the capacity to believe. Watch. Because sometimes, as Christian, knowing what we supposed to do, we resent and we don't do what we supposed to do. We resent it. That did die without hope. The other thief said. We have done bad things and we deserve what we are doing. That's a recognition. Yeah. And then he said to Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> remember me. This is an action of, of insufficient. This is an action of recognition. This is an action of there is some hope here in this border of life. There is some hope for me. So, Jesus immediately, looking beyond what he said, he saw his mind, his soul, his old past. And with a tender heart, extending the first expression, forgive them. Jesus extend his forgiveness to this thief at the cross. And not only forgive him. He say, we'll see you later in the paradise. You know, for those also Sadducees, they don't believe in angels. They don't believe in eternal uh, life. You know, like so many today. So many today. What different make if I don't believe in eternity? What difference it make if I don't believe in God? What difference it make if I don't believe in those things? It make no difference. God still sitting in his throne. God still real. God still present. I am the one who resent and who are denying myself to enjoy with Christ in the paradise. I am the one who decide where I need to, where I want to go, where I, where I will end in my eternal life. I am the one who decide my own final today you're going to be with me in the paradise there are four more expressions five more expressions John 19 26 
Matthew 27, 46, John 19, 29, John 30, and Luke 45. I'm going to start with these five in the second part of this video. Let us pray for our reconciliation with God in this difficult time. Today, I am preaching from my own private place. I would like to be in my pulpit, in my congregation, my friends, I miss you. If you are looking this video, I miss you. I pray for Sabrina, for Jamie, for George, Luis, Barbara, um, Catherine, Chad, and the list continue, and so many, many, many others. I am praying for you, my local congregation, for my people, for my friends, for my family. God, pay the price for our wrongdoing. The only thing that he demands from us is obedience. Father, forgive them. Because today, we're going to enjoy salvation. See you in the next video.